In this video, we'll work on the homework that follows the lecture 4.3 ca called Calculus with Inverse Trigonometric Functions. And in this homework, I will focus on the integration part. So hopefully, as always, you watched all these lectures as I will be referencing some of the material presented there. And I will be expecting that you understand the basics of it. So let's jump right into the homework. And the um, first question is, <clears throat> and the first question is to find the antiderivative of f of x. So we're going to write it as indefinite integral of negative 9 over 1 plus x squared dx. And in this problem, we are going to take out negative 9 right away. And here we need to recognize the pattern. And the pattern is based on the fact that uh, derivative of uh, arc 10 x is 1 over 1 plus x squared, so that means the integral of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx is arc 10 um, x plus c. Why? Again, because in the lesson we learned that the derivative of arc 10 x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So, because of this, the answer is negative 9 times arc 10x plus uh, c. Pretty straightforward. So negative arc 10x uh, plus c. Negative, let's try again, negative 9 arc 10x plus c. There you go. This was number one. Uh, number two, we're looking for the derivative of 8 over 1 plus x squared dx. Uh, it's going to be 8 times the integral of 1 plus x squared dx. And for the same reason as before, uh, the, the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared is arc 10 of x plus c. So this problem was rather simple. All right, this one is more interesting. Uh, we have antiderivative of negative 2 over square root of 9 minus 9x squared dx. Uh, we're going to do the first is the very obvious step is we're going to take negative 2 um, over 3 out. So we have 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared. And we need to recall the antiderivative of 1 over 1 minus x squared, and I don't really remember all those antiderivatives, so let me just go through real quick. Uh, is it arc sine? Uh, yeah, there you go. That looks like arc sine. So the answer is negative 2 thirds of arc sine of x plus c. So let's enter the answer. easy. Let's do another problem. Again, looking for the general antiderivative. So it's an integral of 5 over square root of 11 minus 11x squared. And 
the first is the obvious step we're going to take out 5 square root 11 out and do we have the same integral as above oh yeah we do so the answer will be also the same so this is arc sine of x dx oh sorry there's no dx um, plus c so 5 divided by square root of 11 arc sine of x plus c Mm, arc sine is not in the denominator. There you go. Uh, we don't have time to celebrate. Have to move on. Uh, number five. So we have integral of 2 one over 1 plus x squared dx. I'm not even going to write much here. 2 goes outside and we have to recognize this pattern as the antiderivative of arc 10. So that's the answer. So this is rather too simple. And you can see the advantage of actually writing my inverse trig functions as arc functions, like arc tan, arc sine. I don't have to worry about entering that weird inverse notation by kind of exponentiating and typing minus one. It's just uh, unnecessary. Uh, number six, again, hopefully you can see how easy it is. We take out eight and seven outside of the integral and what's left is going to be 1 over 1 plus x squared. So the final answer is 8 over 7 arc tan of x plus c. Another one. We take out negative four over square root of three. We're left with one over this. And from the previous experience, I know this is just uh, arc sine. So if you look at their solution, <coughs> uh, they don't carry out the negative outside of the integral, making this an antiderivative of our arc cosine, but I have a conversation uh, of this fact in uh, this uh, lecture right over here. So um, it is true that this function has two antiderivatives, but because of the, um, the co-identity of, like, of arc trick functions uh, there is a nice relation uh, between the two so it really doesn't matter if you write negative arc sine or positive arc cosine because they only differ by a constant of pi over 2 so it doesn't matter so don't look at the answer key and assume that your answer is wrong it is as good as it gets um, another one so almost don't 
we wouldn't want to copy the problem because the pattern is just too obvious. Uh, the answer is negative 3 over radical 10 arc sine of x. Or if you look at the Newton solution, it's going to be 3 over radical 10 arc cosine of x. Just for fun, let's type arc cosine this time. And now we get some interesting integrals here. Uh, such as this one. So we have an mm, integral of negative 5 arc sine uh, divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. And First of all, the negative 5 goes outside. And now, in what's left, here's what we should be able to recognize. We have a product of a derivative of arc sine and arc sine. This is a well known pattern, so we're going to address it by substitution. And. In my substitution, I'm going to introduce a new variable and call it arc sine of x. Now, dt is uh, the derivative of this, which is 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared dx. And now you should be able to see how this substitution is going to work out. So we have, we have negative 5. And inside of the integral, we have uh, literally we just have t dt. So antiderivative of t is uh, one half of t squared plus c. But instead of t, I'm going to plug in arc sine. So this is the answer. And the easiest way to check your work is to differentiate the answer and you would see exactly how the substitution works out because the substitution um, takes advantage of the chain rule pattern so um, that's the answer here's another problem So this type of integrals, we will actually, what type of integral is this? This is number 10. Uh, we have an integral. Of x square root of 9x squared minus 16 uh, dx and well we, we're going to take out the 10 for sure but from the denominator we're going to take out the 16 and let's see what happens so 10 comes out in the numerator 16 comes out from the denominator and the radical as 4 and we have the square root of 1 over x square root of 9 over 16 x squared. But we're going to combine that 9 over 16 and x uh, inside of the square. So it's going to be 3x over 4 squared minus 1. So this is the 
uh, step that we want to do and and now we're going to perform a linear substitution so my substitution is t is equal to 3x over 4 meaning that dt is equal to 3 fourths dx and that meaning that means that instead of dx i will be putting in 4 thirds dt but also instead of x i will be putting 4 thirds uh, t right so this is my plan and now let's execute it so we have five halves that's simplified ten fourths we have one over uh, instead of dx i'm going to write four thirds dt and in the denominator instead of x i'm going to write four thirds t square root of t squared minus one and notice how the four thirds is gone and what we have is negative five halves integral of one over t square root of t squared minus one uh, dt and hopefully this is a some antiderivative so i need to investigate that i don't remember them off the top of my head so let's uh, browse through our antiderivatives here it's definitely not arc 10 maybe it's uh, arc secant uh, let's see It does look like arc secant with that uh, minus over there. Something is not right in this here. Hold on. I think there is a minus there, is it? Did we find? There is no minus there. Uh, so there's a typo in this video, so there is no minus in arc secant uh, derivative. So the answer here will be, and also we need to do something about this absolute value. So the idea is that when if if you assume that t is greater than zero, or t greater than zero implies that x is greater than zero. So if you make this assumption at some point, then what you have is exactly same as this. And then, therefore, the answer will be negative 5 halves um, arc secant of uh, t. But arc secant of t, t is 3x over 4. So the final answer will be minus 5 halves arc secant of 3x over 4 plus c. So let's try this answer negative five halves arc secant of three x over four plus c I really need to check the derivative of arc secant here, so uh, I'm gonna do it in an intelligent way, I guess. So arc secant, this is my arc secant, right? And the what's the derivative of arc secant? So that would be the graph of the derivative of arc secant, and now we're gonna check if it's the same as one over x uh, square root of x squared minus 1 
and uh, we see that if you put the absolute value here it is if you don't put the absolute value it is not but I'm assuming interesting do they want to put the absolute value here? No, that makes no sense. Um, did I make a typo? It's actually interesting. Um, I feel like... To be honest, I'm not sure where the negative actually came from. <laughs> this, this negative right here? <laughs> it shouldn't be here. Uh, so let's let me just go back and uh, remove the negative from the answer before I fall into the rabbit hole. And uh, that's right. However, somewhere in the notes in the solution, it has to be mentioned that x is positive. Otherwise, it isn't uh, true, and it doesn't. doesn't look like they do that so um, yeah uh, I'm gonna send the message let's see if it's gonna can I be can I do it real quick let me just double check no where it says that X is positive Anyway, I'll do it on my own time. Okay, let's just move on. Uh, we have another integral of 5 over 9 minus 16x squared inside of the radical dx. So, again, the idea is very similar. We take out 5 over... 4, so we have 1 over, sorry, not 5 over 4, 5 over 3, right, uh, so we have 1 minus 16 over 9x squared, but 16 over 9x squared can be rewritten as Uh, 4x over 3 squared and now we're going to do this substitution uh, t or t is actually a better choice uh, t is equal to 4x over 3 um, dt is equal to 4 thirds dx and then we know that x will be 3 fourths t or dx will be 3 fourths dt right so uh, plugging everything in gives us 5 thirds integral 1 over square root of actually we didn't need x because there is no x in the previous problem we had like an extra x over here now we don't have it so we don't have to worry about it so dx is equal to 3 fourths dt is the only thing we need so it's going to be 1 minus t squared, and dx is uh, 3 fourths dt. So 3 goes out. We have 5 fourths arc sine of t plus c. But t is equal to 4x over 3. So this is the final answer. 5 fourths arc sine 4x over 3 plus c.
have integral of negative 12 secant inverse 3x over x square root of 9x squared minus 1 uh, dx and now you see here they do mention that x is greater than 0 unlike in the previous problem um, so uh, the plan is to well it's it may not be obvious but uh, we're going to we're going to well taking out negative 12 is obvious but we're going to i guess let's do it in two steps so the first step will be to take out negative 12 and then and then let's um observe this the following fact and now we're going to do substitution and my substitution will be let's do it in one step so the substitution will be the arc secant of 3x being equal to t so dt will be the derivative of arc secant of 3x which is 1 over 3x the absolute value but since x is positive we don't need the absolute value times the square root of 3x squared minus 1 uh, times the derivative of 3x which is 3 dx and let me remove the absolute value because again the x is positive and what do we notice here well 3 is gone and we have a perfect pattern here right in the numerator we have t but everything else literally fits this pattern so everything that we have left over here it's exactly this part so all we have in the integral left is t dt that's why i said it's not an obvious substitution but it can also be done in two steps, but sooner or later you would have saw this. So the final answer is negative 6t squared, but t is arc secant of 3x squared plus c. and looks like we are done with this homework and if you have any questions about um, doing integration with uh, involving inverse trig functions please feel free to reach out